Well, good morning. My name's Sarah, if you don't know me, and you might have noticed this morning that Phil and Rebecca aren't here. They're off holidaying on the Sunshine Coast, but someone's got to hold the fort down, right? So I just want to say thank you to all my volunteers and musicians this morning, to Sam and Nicole and the Harris kids and Kyle and Beth, who have helped lead worship, and Rodney as well. Everyone stepped up um, to help out when there's not many people there, and sometimes that's a bit hard and stressful, hey, Nicole? But they're doing a great job. So I think you should give them a round of applause, really. Well, if you were here last week, did anyone start something this week? Anyone? Come on, a few of you were here last week and we started our uh, two-part series for the new year called Get Started. And Rebecca reminded us that we all have something that we need to start. So we took a look at the story of Moses and how he overcame this fear that so many people have of starting something for the fear that we might not be able to do it. She challenged us to just go already or to just do it already because Moses' story reminds us that we have to start where we are, we have to use what we have, and we have to do what we can. So now we're into week two of January already, and even if you weren't here last week, my question is, if you decided to start something, maybe you had a bit of a New Year's resolution or something that you were gonna do, who actually kept it going for a whole entire week? Anyone? Anyone start and fail? No one's into trying new things. Whatever, maybe after today you'll be inspired. Well, this week in our Facebook comment, which some of you may have read, we don't have a messenger this week, so I'm going to share about it this morning. I watched a segment from the Today Show where the hosts interviewed a celebrity trainer called Sam Wood. And they interviewed him on some top tips on how to stay healthy or how to get fit in 2017. Because, according to some data that was pulled from Google, get healthy, okay, was the most popular New Year's resolution this year. It got a huge, ready for it, 62,776,640 searches. I think it's going to come up on the web. That's a lot, right? 62 million. So that was 13.77% increase over last year at the same time period for that search. Now, this trainer, Sam Wood, he reminded people that most people's downfall at this time of year is that they go a little bit too hard, a little bit too early. See, people that haven't done any or very much physical training decide that they're going to get fit, and so for the first couple of weeks of January, they decide that they're going to exercise four times a day, every single day, and they just end up coming unstuck. And then when people don't achieve what they set out to do, they kind of quit. Better luck next year, right? Has anyone ever done that with something you've decided to start? We expect these huge results in minimal time and then we get super discouraged when they don't come off the way that we want. And it's not just about physical fitness. You might have started uh, or made a decision last week to spend more time with God each day. Reading your Bible, praying, listening. And sometimes what we think it takes to get into a good habit is spending two hours every morning in the Word. And that's just completely unrealistic. And then we, we don't get there, so we think, oh, well, I've, I've stuffed up, so I better start next year. But Wood's motto, and I think it's helpful for us today, was this. Progress, not perfection. Progress, not perfection. It's far better for us to start small and to keep moving forward than it is for us to go big and burn out quickly. Being realistic about our goals allows for sustainability. We have to start small and we have to stay focused if we want to make it for the long term. So this morning we're going to take a look at some advice from the prophet Zechariah. And as we read deeper in this story, we see that actually his advice wasn't just about rebuilding the temple. It was about rebuilding people's lives by focusing on the small stuff. So this morning, if you'd like to turn with me, I'm going to read from Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 to 10. Zechariah 4, verses 6 to 10. Then he said to me, this is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel, it is not by force nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Nothing, not even a mighty mountain will stand in Zerubbabel's way. It will become a level plain before him. 
And when Zerubbabel sets the final stone on the temple in place, the people will shout, may God bless it, may God bless it. Then another message came from me from the Lord. Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple and he will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of heaven's armies has sent me. Do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hands. Do not despise small beginnings. See, this this was written at a time when the temple was being rebuilt. The people that were being addressed, they would have known what it meant to have small beginnings. They'd been in Babylonian captivity. They'd finally returned and they were committed to the Lord and the restoration of Jerusalem. But they still needed this reminder. After all they'd been through, after all that was promised to them, They needed reminding to value the small stuff, to set a foundation because it's not without purpose. It teaches us stuff, it prepares us for what is going to come. And so often in our lives, it's the small things that no one sees that results in the big things that everyone wants. There's value in starting small. So when I read my Bible, I see loads of examples of people who started small. People who, like Moses last week, didn't have very much at all to bring to the table. Or people that were just consistent in the small, everyday stuff that led them to where God wanted them to be. And generally, when we look at people who are successful in the things of God, they were people that just started small and just stayed focused. And I think that's supposed to be encouraging for us. Because there's not many occasions where a great leader or a great disciple shows up that hasn't come from a very humble beginning. So this morning, I just want to take a look very quickly at three characters from the Bible, three examples of people who started small, who took little steps, who remained focused on what God wanted for them. So the first person we're going to take a look at this morning is King David. And if you want to check out his whole story, you can find it in 1 and 2 Samuel. But basically, David's small beginning is that he tended sheep. He spent most of his time as a young person looking after some sheep. But the thing was, even with this pretty average kind of job, because he was protecting sheep and had to look after them, he sometimes had to fight lions and bears, which is pretty scary, right? But David did it, and God protected him. And this gave him not only the courage then to fight, but it also gave him this assurance that God was going to be with him through everything. So when the time came for David, as we all know the story of David and Goliath, when the time came for David to face this Philistine, this giant, it was a no-brainer for him. Of course he could defeat Goliath. Of course God was going to be with him. In 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 37, David says, I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. When a lion or bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine as well, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. See, none of the other soldiers, big mighty warriors, even considered fighting Goliath because they hadn't been prepared in the same way that David had. This small, young guy was ready to face Goliath because he'd started off small. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel a little bit like David. I feel like I'm wandering around in a paddock of dumb sheep. (sighs) Like I'm doing this boring day in, day out stuff that is really small and insignificant in the big scheme of my life. But I know that it's not. I know, like David, there's purpose in the small stuff, in not jumping ahead before we're ready and ultimately then being able to go the distance. Christine Kane, who's an author and a a, a big international speaker who I love, I've heard her speak a few times, she says this about the small beginnings of David. Too many people want to shortcut their foundational training program, but they are only shortening their ability to go the distance. See, we want to sometimes jump ahead and do the big stuff before we're ready, and that's not always helpful. And I'm sure for many of us, we can look back at times, um, times when we were asked to do small, seemingly insignificant stuff, and times that we perhaps despised when we were in them. But we can see that they set the foundation for our next step. 
that, that were necessary for the growth that was about to occur in our lives. And we see this in David's story. There's value in starting small. Well, what about Ruth? Ruth was a young woman. She, her husband had just passed away. And she decides to stick with her already widowed mother-in-law who has also just lost her two sons and previously lost her husband. See, Ruth's story is pretty boring. It's pretty ordinary. Basically, Ruth simply was faithful to her mother-in-law and she stayed as she felt convicted to do so and just began working in a field day in, day out so she could provide for them. It's a pretty small and reasonably insignificant beginning, I think. But she was faithful, she worked consistently, and eventually she got married and gave birth to a son who was part of Jesus' family tree. We can trace it back. See, I think if you've read the story of Ruth, and I don't know if you think this too, this is just my thoughts, but I reckon Ruth would have been at the point after the passing of her husband, the passing of her brother, the passing of her father-in-law, that she would have just been at this place in her life where she needed to start again. I reckon she would have had conversations with God, being like, God, what the heck is going on? Where do I even start with my life now? But quite simply, she started by reaching out in relationship, comforting someone that was sad and in need, sticking with her mother-in-law in a tough time. And maybe for many of us, our desire in 2017 is to see this church grow, And this year, you want to set out at seeing that happen. But as I read this story, I thought maybe instead of jumping into planning our next big event, we just need to take the small step of investing into one person and watching that grow. Maybe all it takes for you is to be there for someone that needs you. And you know, I'm often saying to our youth group on a Friday night, hey, if all you guys just invited one friend each, next week, youth group would be double in size. It doesn't take very much. Just one person, just one small step that leads to a huge difference. There's value for us in starting small. And the third person that I want to talk about this morning is Daniel. Daniel's probably one of my favourite characters, I think, in the Bible because I think he understood the value of starting small and remaining focused. See, we read first up that Daniel was brought to train for the king's service. And he was invited to share in some royal food. But he declined it, and he instead disciplined himself on a diet of water and vegetables. It was a pretty simple act, really, but it's an act that eventually made him stronger. And we see as we move along then in Daniel's story that each small thing he did, whether it be eating the right food or studying or spending time in prayer, it enabled his next step then until eventually he becomes the king, one of the king's most trusted advisors. And as I read Daniel's story this week, it became evident to me that small adjustments make a big difference. I'm sure it would have been easy for Daniel to despise his three years of training in the king's service. I'm sure it would have been easy for him to just eat the food or to some days forget praying. But actually, all these things prepared him for what was to come because small adjustments make a big difference. Did everyone read, um, maybe in the paper or maybe you saw on the TV, about the leap second that we were granted this year? Like one whole extra second in 2017. Did you use it well? Yeah. Well, I hope so. Now, I did some reading about this because I thought, that's fascinating, one extra second. How random. But it's the 27th time that a leap second has been inserted, in fact. And it's to ensure that the time based on the Earth's rotation doesn't get behind the constant time that's kept by our atomic clocks. So sometimes we need these extra seconds because of the unpredictable um, time that the Earth spins on its axis, and sometimes it gets out of whack. So clearly, every second does count, right? This tiny amount of time over a long period of time, it has a huge effect. And so the small things for us are important. They make a big difference. None of these three people that we're talking about this morning got to where they ended up by taking massive jumps. They started small, they invested into little things, they were consistent in the small stuff, much of which no one would have ever seen. But it got to where God wanted them to be. So we start small because... The small things prepare us. They lay a foundation for what's to come. 
But we also stay, start small because it helps us to stay focused. Usually, small goals are within our reach, right? They're achievable, and that allows us to continue building on them for the long term. So if you've done no exercise for 12 months or years, probably walking for 15 minutes a day is achievable. It's an achievable goal right now. You can do that, and eventually, maybe you'll be able to make it 30. Eventually, maybe that walk will turn into a jog and then into a run. It's fun. <laughs> Uh, maybe one day. It's far more likely, though, that you'll be able to stay focused on what you set out to do if you start small. Did you like that clip that we watched earlier this morning, just before the message, the tips for the easily distracted? I kind of like that. Anyone easily distracted? Yeah, it's hard. The, ki the kids up the back, yeah, I know you are. <sighs> so when we get started on something, when we're trying to make a change in our lives, distractions come far more easily than habits, don't they? It's hard to remain focused when there's so much else going on. But we have to make a choice ultimately to remain focused, to choose between what we want now and what we want most. And you know, I reckon God's people who were rebuilding the temple were pretty easily distracted. They got off track multiple times. We did a series on Haggai earlier in the year and that was just like them getting off track all the time and this follows. So don't feel discouraged today if you're trying to get started on something that maybe God's been asking you to do many times before. Because we know that we're from our reading from Zechariah, that the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. God's excited to see you start something, even if it's for the 50th time, especially if you're starting small, so that it's achievable, so that you can remain focused, and so that you can get to where he wants you to go. See, David's small beginning tending sheep set a foundation of a relationship of trust and security in God, which then came out in him and made him a great leader. Ruth's commitment to one relationship kept her focused as she worked day in, day out on the field, and eventually got noticed by her husband. And Daniel, his focus, I think, was his greatest asset. The Bible describes, the Message Bible actually describes Daniel as being brimming with spirit and intelligence. It says Daniel completely outclassed the other vice regents and governors, and he was totally exemplary and trustworthy. See, Daniel was focused on God, and he was focused on worshipping him with his whole life. It's a pretty good focus, I think. Daniel's small beginnings had become habits, so much so that when the vice regents and the governors wanted to conspire against Daniel, they wanted to bring him down, they, they set this law that no one could pray to any other god other than the king. But Daniel wasn't shaken. In fact, in Daniel 6.10, we're told when Daniel learned that, he had, that the decree had been signed and posted, he continued to pray just as he had always done. His house had windows in the upstairs that opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he knelt there in prayer, thanking and praising God. Just as he had always done. See, Daniel was focused on what I'm sure was something that he decided to just get started on one day. Maybe Daniel committed, I don't know, to 15 minutes in prayer a day. Maybe to remain focused on his goal, Daniel had to switch off his phone for 15 minutes of the day. Maybe sometimes Daniel had to get up early when he didn't really feel like it. Maybe he had to ask someone to keep him accountable, even though it made him feel uncomfortable until God, what God asked him to do started to become a habit or grew into something bigger. And I don't know what you've committed to start this year or what God's challenged you to get going with today, but start small and embrace the opportunity and the value of a small beginning. And keep going. Stay focused. Little by little, make what God is asking you to do become a habit. Because the more consistent you are now, the easier it becomes when distractions come, and they will. I'm going to invite the band back up now because in a moment we're going to spend some time in prayer. But I just wanted to share with you a quote this morning, a, a quote that I love. I've got it, actually it sits on my bedside table and I look at it often. And the quote says, What you do every day matters more than what you do once in a while. What you do every day matters more than what you do once in a while. 
And I love this quote because it reminds me that the little things matter. Staying focused on those little things matter. The stuff that I do day in, day out is actually vital to the bigger picture of my life. Half an hour spent in God's word each morning might not seem like much, but it changes the entire outlook of my day. And then eventually it affects the small decisions that I make in my day, which eventually affect the big picture of my life. An hour at the gym is only 4% of my day. But I know that it makes me stronger, not just physically, but mentally as well. What small thing can you change or start or maybe stop this morning that's going to affect something big? So as we sing this morning, I just want you to take some time to pray, to firstly ask God again what you need to get started on this year. If you've already forgotten or stopped from what you committed to do last week, think about that this morning. I want you to ask him what small steps you can take to get to where he wants you to be, to remain focused on the goal, because what you actually start out doing is achievable and you can maintain it for the long term. Maybe for some of us this morning, we feel like the people that Zachariah is talking to and we despise the small beginnings, the place that we're at. But God's saying, don't. He's saying, stay focused. There's purpose and value in the small stuff. So just as we sing, the place of prayer is open if you'd like to come and take a moment, recommit yourself to him this year, to ask what he wants you to do, where he wants you to start. Let's just take a moment to sing and to reflect. Think about the small stuff and how important it is.